Okay, so here we're looking at multiplying and dividing with scientific notation. Now I want to just step back and and say that yes, we can use a calculator here because we're trying not to focus so much on the arithmetic of division, but on the power of using base 10 in our multiplication and division. Let me show you what I mean with this quick example here. So I'll pull this off here for a second. So what we often see is that when students work with a problem like this, where it says 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative second, right, divided by 9 times 10 to the negative first, what do we see them do? We see them rewrite the problem, and then we see them expand it and not use base 10 to their advantage. So they would take the numerator, right, and they'd write that as 0 0.06, right, 6, 6, and then the denominator as 0.9. That's equivalent forms. They've used a negative exponent right here, negative 1 to move your decimal once to the left, and negative 2 to move your decimal once twice to the left, and then they divide these two numbers and get an answer, right? And that's not wrong. This is, this is mathematically equivalent, right? This but what we want you to start to do is realize how we can use different properties, how we can use the associative and commutative properties to mess around with these so that what we end up doing is 6.66 .66 divided by 9, right? Just divide those two first factors right here and here. And then multiply that by the quotient of the powers of 10. So you're going to do that, try to do that in all these examples to envision this. And in this particular example, 6.66, .66, right, divided by 9, it's actually not too bad. We'll use a calculator, but 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 6 is 18. And when you add up the digits and get a product of 9, you know 9 will go into this evenly, and it will. Uh, but here, what we can realize is that this is great, because 10 to the negative second divided by 10 to the negative first, what do we do? Well, we'll divide it by equal bases, so we subtract the exponents. Negative 2 minus negative 1 is 10 to the negative first. So here, once we pull up our calculator, right, we've got 6.66 divided by 9. That equals 0.74. And that is being multiplied by 10 to the negative first. And now we're one step away. 0.74 is, is too small of a number. This first factor should have an absolute value between 1 and 10. So we multiply it by 10 to make 7.4. But then we balance that out by taking a power of 10 away here, or, or dividing by 10. And we get 7.4 times 10 to the negative second. So this process, even though in this particular case didn't really seem to speed things up, is building your intuition with these types of division and product um, expressions, right, where you can pull apart the first factor in the powers of 10. That's something that's going to be really helpful as you move forward. So we have our answer here, 7.4 times 10 to the negative 2. And some of these you can move quickly, like in this one, 5.3 divided by 1. Well, that's just 5.3. And then 10 to the 9th over 10 to the 5th is 10 to the 4th. You subtract the exponents. And as you go through these, this will keep happening over and over again. Sometimes things will get a little tricky, like this one, 7.2, I think of 72 divided by 8, all right? That's just 9. But this is going to be what? Well, it's going to be 0.9 because it's not 72, right? It's 7.2. It's 10 times smaller. So it's 0.9, and then 10 to the 3rd over 10 to the negative 2nd, 3 minus negative 2, that's 5. But this isn't the answer, right? Because 0.9 is too small. You want 9, so you multiply that by 10, and then divide by 10 here to balance it out. We've got the right thing. And here, they're doing the same thing, just in a different form. So we're going to multiply the first numbers, multiply the powers of 10 to add the exponents, and you'll get it. All right. Use your calculator if you need to, but avoid using it, especially for powers of 10. Um, you really want to get used to how those work. Thank you.